Today, we're going to take a look at what it means to find a derivative. First, what I'd like you to do is go to this website, so pause the video, and then go here. You'll, you'll really thank me after you've gone and done this activity. It's uh, Mark Renault's GeoGebra, look at derivatives, and it has a nice applet there that will let you work through it. So stop the video, go do that, and then come back. So the derivative is what we call an instantaneous rate of change. So given any curve, wherever you are on that curve at any given time, what is the instantaneous rate of change there? What is it here? And we can use the derivative to find that. They can be in different forms. So the derivative you get can be just a number. It's going to be a derivative uh, at a specific point on the graph, just as you see here. It's the derivative there or here. The derivative can change on a function, or it can be the same. So it can be a constant everywhere, or it can be different at different points. And so when it is different, you have a function or a formula to find that derivative. So when you find the derivative, it's just a, a note to say sometimes it's a number, sometimes it's a function. And you just have to keep your eyes open for when one you expect one to happen as opposed to the other. So now, one way to look at a derivative is as a limit. This notation, the derivative of f prime, that's f prime of s, that you have that little tick mark there, that's what uh, is a notation for this being the derivative lim of h goes to zero, so this is the limit as h goes to zero of this uh, rational piece. So let's take a look at what that means. So you have a curve, and the curve is f of x, so this is f of x, and on that curve you're going to take a look at the point where you have x, and then the line through x up to this other point, which is x plus h. The h being how far apart this is here. So if you have x, you add h, you get to here, and then that becomes that point on the curve. Now, what we're taking a look at is what happens when you let h go to zero. So this is saying take the y value of x plus h here, the y value of f of x, that's here, so take the difference in those two, divide it by h, and h, if you look at this and take x plus h minus x, you end up with this h, so it's really the slope formula. You're finding the slope of the secant line, we call this a secant line. So as h here gets smaller, this point comes this way, and this point comes down on this curve, so the secant line is coming down closer and closer and closer and closer until you get to what would be the tangent line at x. And so this limit is saying, let's make h really, really small. We're going to bring this x value in. Bringing that x value in makes this y value travel along the curve so that you're looking at successively closer and closer and closer lines until you get this tangent line. The derivative of f at this point x, whatever that number is, is equal to that limit and it's really the slope of this tangent line. If you went and looked at that activity I asked you to do on the previous slide, you would see an applet of this. So we're trying to drive this guy in, and this is what we call the limit uh, definition of a derivative, and, it, and it's the fundamental idea of how we get down to this tangent line. Now graphically, when we look at these first, remember rate of change is going to be for this line here, we're looking at this line, the rate of change of this is a line is 3. So the average rate of change equals 3, which is also the slope of that line, right? Well, for that line, every point on here, wherever you are, the slope of that line is still 3. And so we can say the derivative of that is 3 at any point on this curve. 
We could also take a look down here at this horizontal line. We know a horizontal line has a slope of zero, and so what we can say is that at any x on this line, the slope is still zero, because it is zero everywhere. The average rate of change on any segment of this line is also zero. So the derivative is zero. Now, when we get to this other one, this is where we have that idea of the limit definition, where we went from x and x plus h, and we drive this in close to try to get to the tangent line. And then that tangent line here is going to be this way, which is really cool because the y values come down and around. And then the tangent line ends up being here. And that is going to be the slope of the tangent line is going to be the derivative of the function at that particular value. Now, as you can uh, guess, what happens here, slope is the same everywhere, derivative is the same everywhere, slope is the same everywhere, derivative is the same everywhere, but the tangent lines on this guy, different, 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 oh look, there's one that's zero, different, 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 zero again different, different, different. And so here, we're going to have to get a function for this guy's derivative so that when we give it a particular x value, we can find the slope at, a, at one single place. So notation is key to this whole discussion. And when you have f of c, that is x is some c, this is going to give you the y value at that c. So it's the y value evaluated at x is c. When you have a prime sitting here, or f prime, that's the derivative of the function. Sometimes what you'll see is your function is y equals, and you get a function, then our derivative would be written as y prime, and then you would find the derivative. So f prime of c, so if f of x is the derivative of the function, if you do it at a particular x value, it's the derivative of that function at that particular x value. We also say it's the slope of the tangent line at that x value. And that's also the instantaneous rate of change at that x value. So these three phrases, derivative, slope of the tangent line, instantaneous rate of change, they all are different ways of saying the exact same thing. And so if we've got f of x and it's 3, then f prime of x is dy dx is one notation. We're also looking for the derivative of the function, 3x, and there shouldn't be a comma inside here. Get rid of that comma. That should just be 3x. So if that is equal to 3x, then the derivative is the derivative with respect to x and other notation. So other notation even more than this. But first, get a grip on this, right? The function's y value the derivative, the derivative evaluated at a number for x. Here it is also called the slope of the tangent line, which is also called the instantaneous rate of change. So we're still talking slope, folks. We just have, when we're in calculus, we use different language because we're heading to more complicated ideas, and we need this kind of notation to take us there. And we need this kind of language to take us there as well. So it's not meant to be confusing. It's meant to drive the conversation for later. So that's it. Hope you're having a great day.